Now, how many of you constantly think of calories and labels when buying food at a local supermarket? But do the labels really tell you the whole story? Fitness professional Bernadette Abraham is here to discuss the reality of labeled foods and what they really mean. Bernadette, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me Good again. Good to have you on. Thank you. I just love it when you come on because you shoot down so many of our <laughs> theories that we've built over the years. Now, Bernadette, I love my cheese, uh, cream, mayo, everything. But when I go to a supermarket and when I pick a low-fat item, I think I'm doing a good job. What do you think? Well, first of all, mm -hmm. okay, just as a general rule, ignore the front claims on the front of the product. There's two things that you always want to look at. The list of ingredients, mm -hmm. so what is actually in the product, mm -hmm. and the serving size. So, for example, we were talking about fat-free. So, this can of cooking spray, right on the front of the panel, says fat-free. If you turn it around and you look at the list of ingredients, it's all oil. Mm. And what is an oil? Mm. It's pure fat. Mm. So how can something that is pure fat be labeled fat-free? Mm. And this is where I was telling you have to look at the serving sizes. Mm. The regulation states that anything that's less than half a gram can be labeled as zero. Okay. So what food manufacturers do is they manipulate the serving size and make it very minuscule. And in this case, it's actually a quarter of a gram. So mm -hmm. that is actually less than mm -hmm. half a gram. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they could label it as fat-free. But it's actually not. It's actually pure fat. Another very common myth, is sugar-free the same as fat-free? No. So sugar-free, when, when you're talking about sugar-free, it doesn't have any table sugar, but it does have sweeteners. It's got sugar substitutes. It's got sugar alcohols. Mm -hmm. Now, sugar alcohol is a natural form of sugar called a polyol. Mm -hmm. It's much, much sweeter than, than table sugar, mm -hmm. and so you need just a little bit to sweeten the product. Now, if you take excess of this, it can cause intestinal discomfort. And it's actually, you'll see a little small print if you, if you look on sugar-free foods that say excess consumption may lead to, you know, intestinal discomfort. Let's so go on to a couple of practical uh, pieces, if we can, Bernadette, because we've been out shopping, mm -hmm. uh, trying to pick up a few little bits and pieces that people would regularly find on the shelves. Let's mm -hmm. start with something that we all know is bad for us, chips, crisps, okay. call them what you like. Okay. Uh, we've got these, we've got reduced fat here, they tell you you've got 25% less than the normals, uh, or of course you've got baked here, now they've got 70% less fat, so okay. they must be good for you. Well, not necessarily. Again, you have to look at the list of ingredients and see what's in there. Uh, it's baked. Is it a better alternative than the fried? Sure. It's up to you to make that informed decision. Now, reduced fat, it's exactly what's written here, 25% less fat. It either means it's 25% less fat or a third less of the calories, um, typically what that is what that means. And um, mm. for example, though, on something like butter, where it says 75% or light. Basically what they do is they increase the volume. So I'm gonna give you an example. You have a clump of fat, all right, and you add water to it. Therefore, you're increasing the volume. And when you do that, you're basically, you could say that it's 50% fat free. So the, in essence, when they create butter or anything, they're increasing the volume by adding fluid, by adding liquid. So are you trying to say that it, it is better to buy like full cream milk and you know, rich mayonnaise as opposed to buying something that's low fat and sugar Well, you just have to be aware of what it is that you're consuming. If something says, again, going back to fat-free, for example, like salad dressings, mm -hmm. now in, in, in this case, it might be fat-free. There might not be any fattening ingredients in there, but in order to keep the same taste and the same texture, they need to add in sugar. Mm. And so if you're someone who wants to lose weight or if you're diabetic, that's something that you need to be concerned with. Mm. One that's uh, always a favorite is, of course, uh, diet Soda. drinks, uh, those that have no sugar. What about yes. them? They must be good for you. So yeah. again, this has a sugar substitute called aspartame. Aspartame is the most popular form of sweetener that they put in, in diet drinks. And this has been in debate since even before I was born. So the, the controversy here is that the FDA has regulated it. They say that it's good for, obviously it's on the shelf, and that we can, it's safe for consumption. However, there are many, many, many studies that show otherwise that, you know, and even if you go on the FDA's site, you'll see a lot of uh, reports of symptoms like headaches, um, insomnia, yeah. dizziness, uh, behavioral changes and mood changes and whatnot. And also there's a study that was conducted by a woman, she's not a scientist or anything, and she took rats and gave them Splenda, every day put Splenda in their water, and by two years they developed tumors the size of, you know, golf wow. balls, so okay. especially in the females. Well. So <laughs> just be aware, you know, if you have a can of soda, diet soda, is it going to kill you? No. but. Just be aware, make that informed decision and know the rest. Well, Bernadette, that is definitely some great <laughs> advice <laughs> you've you. given us. Thank you so much for joining us. For more information, for log on me. to our <laughs> Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash studio one live. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a short break, but when we do return,